We are live. Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. I am Paul Montoric. I'm the editor in chief of Broadway.com. Thank you. Come on in. Come on in. Join the room. Good to have you. Hello, Moulin Rouge fan, fan, fans. I'm a fan, fan, fan. I love it. Uh, thank you all for being here. We are going to go live in a moment. Mm -mm. Is everyone having a good uh, day? Thursday, almost a weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm -mm. Oh, papa. Um, mm -mm. hold on. Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry for that pause. <clears throat> um, how's everyone doing? We're going to get to our guest. Uh, obviously, I know I'm a fan of his, a fan, fan, fan for a long time. Um, God, he's done so much already on Broadway. Mr. Aaron Tveit will be joining us. Hello, Ireland. Good to see you. Um, yeah, you know, and it's funny. I was looking on uh, Aaron's Instagram and it has been 10 years to the day since the very first uh, Broadway preview of Catch Me If You Can. Uh, which, you know, I saw, I had already seen Aaron Tveit in Next to Normal before that. I think I saw him in Hairspray as well. Um, but, and he was fantastic in Next to Normal. But when I saw Catch Me If You Can, I remember I went to an early preview because I was very excited about that show. I'm a big fan of Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman and Jerry Mitchell and Jack O'Brien, that whole team. And I went to see an early preview of it. And... Um, he was so, he blew my mind. He was so fantastic in that show. And then he, uh, came in like right after that, like the, I think like the following week he came in and did, um, for his first interview in our, in, on show people with me, which was a really fun interview. And, uh, it started a fantastic friendship. He's so great. And he's done so many things since then. Um, and he's going to join us in a minute. How's everybody doing? It's been one year, right? Today's a little bit of a milestone. Um, he was so good in Catch Me If You Can. And I also saw his, there he is. There's Mr. Aaron Tveit. Everybody ready to see him? Let me see. Let me find him. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. One moment. I know, he's coming. Hold on. <laughs> There's so many, you, there's so many of you in here. <clears throat> Hold on. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 of course, no, no, you're gonna, you're, he's coming, here he is. Oh my God, it says that there's issues. Hold on. We can just chat this way, Aaron. We'll just chat in the comments section. We're getting a, um, it says you're unable to join. Hold on, hold on everybody. It's gonna be worth the wait. Uh, Aaron, it says you're, it's, <laughs> hold on. Mm -mm. This is, bro yeah, this is Broadway. This is Broadway. Uh, yeah, see if you can, we don't do a lot of these live videos. Um, mm, mm, mm. So, you know, of course, of course, the first time we have a fancy Tony nominee, of course, we're having issues. It says, Aaron, go out and go back in. I think that's a good idea. I like that idea. This is so chaotic. What are we going to do? It's fine, everybody. It's fine. It's totally worth the wait. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> this is theater. Is everybody still here? This is so good. This reminds me of, I'm not even gonna say it, hold on. Yeah, Aaron, it says you have to update the app. That's what it says. The anticipation. Why is everybody, um, I'm okay, I'm totally fine. I'm totally chill. I'm just excited to talk to Aaron. No day but today. <laughs> Um, yeah, what do you guys, you guys want to talk about your favorite moments in Moulin Rouge? I was actually listening to the Moulin Rouge album, uh, and I actually forgot some of the songs in it. It's been a while, so I'm excited to, uh, to, um, have the chance to see it again, right? I know we all are. Hold on. I keep trying, everybody, I swear. Mm -mm. One moment. It'll be a moment, but it's totally worth it. It's totally worth it. Stupid updates. Who has time? Uh, you just watched the movie for the first time. Wow. Well, I know that Aaron, Aaron and Karen Oliva were both huge fans. I mean, all of them. Robin Herter. All the all those Tony nominees were big fans of that movie. I was a huge fan of that movie, and I was so nervous about them making a Broadway musical out of it. I was like, this better this this better not upset me <laughs> and it didn't it's so fantastic and it's nominated for 14 tony awards very uh very well deserving mm -mm -mm. okay hold on oh my god oh my god oh my god everybody cross your fingers mm -mm -mm. hold on it's coming. Um, I, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Aaron, today. You know, I like to joke that I'm like a troglodyte and I can't uh, work social media. But this was not a this was not a joke. This was, uh, I, yeah. I, of course, I needed to update the app because I, I would never update any of my apps. So, hey, everybody, <laughs> worth the wait. You know, I was having I was having horrible flashbacks to the Sondheim concert night, which you were a part of, and of yes. course that that had a slight delay as well. Yes. Uh, yes. How, how are you, sir? So good to see you. I'm pretty good. Good to see you too. Yeah, I see your uh, your house upstate. Very nice. I, Looks I lovely. see you against a white brick wall. Very yep. nice. Yep. Very, Very New York nice. City. Here's New York City behind you. <laughs> you, are, you are in New York City. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in New York. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, well, you've, been, in... you've been different places. You've been around doing things. Yeah, I've been around. Yeah, I was in Vancouver for a f uh, few months. Luckily, getting to work on a new Apple Apple TV series. That's um, It's going to have a lot of... Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, mileage with musical theater fans because it's kind yeah. of a musical theater dream. So yeah, it was it was uh, it was a, it was amazing to do that. And yeah, I've been really fortunate to do a little bit of work during this uh, very very difficult time. So it's pretty great. And, and we are going with the title Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon. Yeah, there was a time. That, that is. <laughs> yeah, when I was uh, auditioning, it was Schmigadoon. But then I think they I think they had to check with the Brigadoon camp. You know what I mean? Whoever's running the Brigadoon camp had to okay it. Because, uh, yeah, actually, on all, all of our production signs on set, it said, it said Pudden, P-U-D-D-N, P-U-D-D-I-N okay. with a little thing. And then uh, we had to get, um, get the Schmigadoon okay. But we got it. So Schmigadoon Amazing. will be coming uh, your way soon. Amazing. I can't wait. So that, that is, that, that's in the future. We have a lot of right now things to talk about. First okay. of all, today, today. Uh, I was just, I, when I was um, vamping, waiting for, yeah. waiting, for your, <laughs> waiting for your app to update, I'm not a pro vamper. Yeah. Um, I was I was telling everyone that I saw on your Instagram. It today is the tenth anniversary of the first preview of Catch Me If You Can, and I I think I begged to see that show really early. They don't always let press people see it early, but I feel yeah. like I feel like I was like I need to get in there, and then I immediately was like I need to interview. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I mean think, I knew you, I think you that were great in Next to Normal, but Catch Me If You Can was like that entire. There were like millions of dollars on your shoulders. There's there's millions of dollars on my show. Yeah, yeah. I try not to think of it that way at the time, but yeah, it's very true. Yeah, and I think we did our first show people 
while we were, I think we were still in previous for yeah. I don't think we had even opened yeah. it. So yeah, it was probably yeah, like was, a week, a week from now. In yeah, ten year, ten years ago. Yeah, ten years ago. Yeah, you know, I, recently it was like the it was the five year uh, anniversary of Grease Live, and that that seemed like a blink, but t yeah. ten years is like a that's a real number. You know, ten years is a real number. So it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing. It's pretty special. I mean, that was a very very special show, and uh, I still think that. Um, it didn't have as long of a life as I, I wanted no. it to have. We all wanted it to have. And I really think it's one of those shows that they're going to revive it one day. And it's just going to be kind of the right place and right time. And it's, it'll, it'll get its due. You know, it's that, that soundtrack and the, the score that Mark and Scott wrote. And mm -hmm. it's so smart and so yeah. beautiful. And there were just so many things about it that I think were really, really special. And yeah, I, th I, I can't wait to sit in the audience and watch it one day. Maybe it gets a revival on Broadway and it'll be, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be pretty cool. You'll get invited to the opening and some kid will be <laughs> playing your role. It'll be great. Yeah, right. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, but you um, know, it's, it's had like a, it's had a really great life uh, in regional theaters. And I know like a lot of high school and college productions have been doing it. So yeah, it's, it's had like a really kind of a, a amazing life after Broadway, which is, which is always great, right? Because yeah. some things, sometimes they don't get to run forever here, but people all around the world get to see it. So, you know, it's, it's awesome. And, and uh, you won a Tony for that, didn't you? That, yeah, I'm pretty sure you won. I mean, you were so good in that. I'm pretty sure you won a Tony. I, I fit, no? I, I did not. I my memory, my memory's going, you know? Yeah, no. <laughs> what, actually, what I really remember about Catch If You Can was I went to the final performance because I yeah. was such a fan of it. Yeah. And, um, and you, you sang goodbye, which was your big, and it was, it was, um, it was next level. It was next yeah. level. And well, it was, it was you know, and, the, sh the show yeah. was about kind of, you know, my, the way that we told it was, it's like, as if you have like a memory that you want to tell about your life and then you get to the bad part and you decide to kind of rewrite the story that you're telling. And so that's kind of how goodbye functioned in the show that we got to this point where, you know, Frank finally was getting caught and he had to, and besides that, he had to really finally deal with the death of the death of his father and kind of the, the how his family fell apart. And so, you know, this guy decided to just rewrite the ending and say, I'm not going to do that. This is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And so it became a, the, one of those very strange art imitating life, imitating art moments when we got to that moment in our final show. And, you know, that cast and crew and creative team, we'd all worked on it for so long together. And I think we were all very devastated that it was ending. So, yeah, I kind of I found myself kind of watching myself in that moment and it just was it was very very overwhelming and mm -hmm. uh the audience you know i think they understood kind of the the weight of that moment too and it was one of the you know i've been i've been a part of i've been lucky enough to be part of some really special moments in the theater and that was that's definitely up there and one of the very one of the very very special moments that i've had in the theater well what i saw when i saw that show was i already knew you were talented uh next to normal was fantastic but I saw you actually being a leading man and you know what I mean? And, and now you're nominated for yeah. lead actor in a musical from Moulin yes. Rouge. Yes. A big, big juicy leading man role. Um, yeah. And they, you know, they don't come along, they don't come around that often, right? They don't know. A, a great role like that. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, Catch If You Can was interesting because yeah, I'd had a wonderful experience with Next to Normal. That was kind of the first, um, the first original cast I've been a part of. Actually, you know, I got to do a, I did a I did a, a musical version of the Three Musketeers that we did at North Shore, um, I think in two, summer 2007, and uh, it, they'd hoped that it was going to have future life, and it kind of you know as things happened, it didn't. But that was a that was a part for me playing D'Artagnan that was similar to to Frank Jr., where I was really on stage for kind of the whole evening, and I learned, you know, I think I needed that show to kind of teach me the confidence that I could mm. do that, right? And so by the so then I you know when we got to Catch If You Can. Um, I, I'd had that in my back pocket. I, even though it was a limited run, limited experience, I'd had an experience before where I'd really done that. So I think I was, I think I really leaned on that during that show. And, and yeah, that was, uh, you know, just eight, eight shows a week is always an act of uh, endurance. But that, that show in particular really, really pushed me. You know, it was like I had to dance because, you know, God bless Jerry Mitchell. He wanted me out there dancing and I had to dance and sing. And it was, it was yeah, it was, it was really, it was, it was a lot. <laughs> it was all the things. Well, Moulin Rouge is a lot too. Christian yeah. is is a lot. And um I I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I don't know if you remember how to do it. It's now been a year. Um, I do. I do I do remember. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Do you feel yeah, like I keep, you like could, I keep you, dreaming that we're just gonna get a call and say, Hey, we're doing the show tomorrow night and I'm like, let's do it. You'd so. be ready. You could just jump in. 
I would, you know what, the first show would be great, and then the second show would not be so good. So that, that's what would happen. But no, uh, yeah, I, um, that's another, you know, I've been, this, the, I haven't been on Broadway since Catch Me If You Can, you know, with, yeah. with Moulin Rouge, and it was, it was about eight or nine years when it happened, and the timing of things, and waiting for a part that matched up with the timing, and this was just kind of a, a dream, and I get to really kind of do everything and the kitchen sink for what an actor wants to do in a show, and... Uh, and then the other thing is, you know, I think we're ready because we we did our we did our Boston run and then had about eleven months before Broadway. So we're, I'd like to think that we're used to a little bit of time. Oh, away. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's how I'm so tricking we, myself to. Get, I got get, it. That's how I'm tricking myself to get through the time off. <laughs> yeah, and it was only better. So it's yeah. just gonna it's just gonna be next level, right? Yeah. Gonna... I hope. I hope so. Yeah. Well, I've said it many times that that is the show I want to be in the audience for when Broadway's back. I love that show so much you know this and i love that movie and what you what what you and that incredible cast and design team and alex timbers and I, the music everything choreography i'm like my mind is like the minute i think of moulin rouge my mind just like fills with like theatrical magic it's, yeah it's I like mean, ma it's like theatric maximism and as you know as many as yeah. many things as you can put in but yeah the the night back is uh i can't wait to be there I think um, because of the way our show operates with the audience and it really invites the audience to be a part of the evening and, you know, the responses that, you know, very quickly they learn that they know so much of the music. So they, they're kind of encouraged and they find, yeah. even though they don't know, they find this thing that they want to respond to what's happening on stage and respond to these songs that they know. So there's just this, um, they really became another character in our show. So thinking of it that way, and then thinking of that night that, I mean, all the theaters in New York, across the country, I just think that night that, that we all can go back, that everyone can go back, it's gonna be so special. And then on top of that, you know, at our show, just because of the way the audience operates, it's gonna be, it's gonna be so electric in that building. You know, that, that'll be a night where, you know, it's like on opening nights, I try not to have coffee before the show because there's like so much adrenaline that's gonna happen. So that'll be a night where I will, I'll have to not have coffee. <laughs> no coffee, no, no coffee. No. So let's talk about uh, October 15th. It's been a while since October 15th, but that yes. was the day that you got your Tony nomination. The show yes. got 14, I believe, 14. nominations. Yeah. 14. Uh, did you get to, I mean, it's, it, this is an odd way. Obviously this year has been very strange with the yeah. Tony Awards and with the whole process of it. But did you get to celebrate? Did you, what, what was the moment like, take me into the room with you and how did you celebrate that great moment? You know, we, in the actual moment, um, yeah, I was, I was, I think I was off. I was in Vancouver doing Schmigadoon and I think I was off, off work that day. So I was home and um, I, I might've had a, because this is where we are today, I think I had a COVID test that afternoon. So, <laughs> you know, I, 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 it happened in the morning and then, you know, the messages start to fly in and, um, and, uh, it's just, it's really, really special. You know, it's a, something that I, for, you know, for better or worse, it's like the thing that we all look towards as stage actors. And it's the thing you start hearing um, from a very young age. And then of course, it just, when you, when you start to be a part of it, it just is, it's such a, that's what's interesting about this year because the Tony season is really when you feel the community come together. You know, you're seeing all these yeah. friends in other shows and you're seeing, them that press things and performances and then ultimately at the Tony Awards. So that's what's a little bit strange this year is, you're, you know, we're, we're, we didn't get that part of it. But I also think when we come back, it'll be that way. But yeah, I mean, the, the outpouring of friends and family and uh, former colleagues and, uh, you know, a everyone I've ever known just kind of saying congratulations. And it, it just really, it just meant so much. It was, it was, it was very overwhelming. And, um, you know, I know it's a, it's an interesting year because I'm the only nominee, uh, right. which uh, is historic, I guess, in a way, because it's never happened before. But I don't, you know, I, I'm trying not to let that, um, it hasn't, it hasn't taken away anything um, in terms of the scope of the whole thing for me, because, yeah, this has been, you know, uh, for me, it's like a lifelong journey to this point. And all of these things and the 14 nominations for our show is, you know, the hundreds of people that have worked on the show. So I just look at it as a recognition of work and it's a moment in time and I'm just, I'm so grateful for it. But yeah, I got, you know, really, really meaningful messages and, and gifts from people close to me. And uh, it's, uh, it was, it was very, very special. And it still is, it's still extremely special. Did you feel like in the show, it feels like Christian really has to be the, 
the sort of center and the and the right there's so much like it's one of those those shows where yeah. you think about the overall structure of it there's yeah. so much going on in the show and you really have to sort of bring this like very solid presence to it um yes. what what was it like finding that what was it like finding that character and and is that accurate what i'm saying and did that sort of develop over the time and you also had amazing chemistry with uh Karen Olivo, fellow Tony nominee. Yeah. Um, what was it like sort of finding Christian? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because like you said, you know, he's, I'm kind of, I've kind of landed in Narnia, right? I'm Dorothy in Oz. I'm, I'm yeah. Alice in Wonderland. And I, because of that, Christian is a little bit the audience. I, I, I've always thought of him and Alex and John and I talked about this at length that a, a bit, I'm also the audience's eyes into this world, right? And so there's, right. there's two things happening. I, you know, besides finding Christian and finding what he means to me and how he works, it, it's like really about op how, how he operates in this place because, you know, he meets these fantastic people and characters and they're all larger than life and he doesn't know he's larger than life yet. So I think, you know, I, right. I really thought about that a lot about being kind of the audience's eyes into this world a little bit, especially because as I said, the audience is such a part of our show. So um, yeah, and it was, it was a, it's a process over time and luckily we, had a whole lab experience and then some time away and then the whole Boston experience and then some time away. And I've gotten to do that a couple times next to normal was similar to that where we did right. a big reading and then had time and then had a whole re rehearsal process for off Broadway time rehearsal process for DC time and then Broadway. So I, I think I like, I really enjoy doing that because you get to learn so much from a rehearsal process, but even more from a run and then you get to go away from it and kind of it like settles and processes and all these things. And then you get to kind of go back, but start with all this other knowledge and keep working and keep digging. So, so yes, I, I've just been, you know, fascinated by him and I've said it, you know, a few times in interviews, I just think it's so interesting being a, what it means to be from the middle of this country in 1899, which is all kind of industrial revolution, railroad, steel, oil, manifest destiny, and then, finding yourself dropped into Bohemian Paris, right. which is, you know, in this time and the, the height of artistic expression, all these things. So I think like all the, from a historical standpoint, because I'm a historical nerd, that it's uh, that was always of so much interest to me because, um, you know, wh what is this guy who somehow has this bleeding heart, but has no reason to even know that he has it and then meets the Toulouse-Lautrec on the street. It's like, how does that happen? So, right. you know, that was always really, really interesting. Um, interesting to me about it as well. Historical nerd, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, what, what kind of things have you been digging into in the last year? You know, we've all had sort of time to, I mean, we'd have no choice, but obviously yeah. been doing great, great work uh, on camera. And even yeah. you have a audio, uh, audio series too. Yeah, yeah right? I, did an, I did an audio series. Like I said, I've been, I've been extremely fortunate to, uh, to work during this time. And yeah. it's, um, it's something that I, I'm just, tremendously grateful for because I, I'm just acutely aware that we, you know, we work and operate in a world where so many people have not been able to work and, and not even that can't work, right? Our work is gone in a sense. Right. So um, yeah, I'm really, really grateful that I've been able to do that. And, you know, I got to shoot a Christmas movie and then oh, we, we, came saw, we, and, we saw, we saw the Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 It came, it came, I, I, we had a blast. Fun. It was like so fun to work with Laura and Vicky and Crystal and, you know, we yeah. had such a good time. But um, yeah, so cool. I have an Audible series coming out. Schmigadoon will be coming out. Uh, but yeah, so I, I've I've been able to work. Um, I think it's been just, but it's been trying as everybody to, you know, find find things to do when you quote unquote can't go do anything. But it's been a lot of, um, a lot of you know, hopefully self-reflecting. And then of course, I think this, this whole year has been so pivotal for everything that's happening in the world on kind of a grand scale. And so many things have come up that maybe wouldn't have gotten so much attention or been able to come up if life as normal had gone forward. So I also think oddly, and I, maybe this is my kind of complete optimism. I, I, I hope that we look back at this, at this year, as hard as it was and as hard as it's been, that this was the year that things finally changed. You know, that's, I truly hope and believe that when we, when we look back at this time, it's going to say, oh, this is the time that these racial issues finally were, began to be addressed and changed and inequality and, you know, things that go in our business and all across the world. I think that, 
you know, I, I hope that when we look back, we say that was the moment, that was the tipping point that finally got people to wake up. So, so I've tried to really think about that a lot. And, you know, hope that's, that's something that, again, it's just my, my blind optimism that I hope we're going to come out for the better on the other side of this. Yeah. Well, when everything stops, then we can all sort of like look at ourselves and look at the world, right? I mean, it's yeah, you have to, a, you know, and yeah. I think because our, our cars, the nature of our world is so fast paced that you don't really get the time to do that when you have so many things to do. So, yeah, so I, I, I just, uh, I hope that's what happens. I hope that's what's happening. Have you also been um, binging? Like what kind of thing, if you turn on your TV, what kind of thing will get your attention? Like, lots of like binging, what, yeah, you know, yeah. lots of... Uh, Thank goodness for thank goodness for television and thank goodness for <laughs> bingeable television series. Uh, you know, Queen's Gambit, rewatched of Fargo course. and the new Fargo. Um, uh -huh. I can't even count, you know, countless shows. One thing that's kind of creeped in, I think, in a very strange way uh, is uh, is uh, is bra some Bravo shows, you know, just kind of mindless, wow. uh, <laughs> mindless reality. Like, some, like Housewives and that's just that. actually Below Deck has really been the oh, one. Oh, Below Deck. Okay, yeah, Below yeah, Deck. that's. That's kind of the one that's uh, that's creeped in, you know. My my girlfriend had had I had never seen it, and she she kind of introduced it. So so we've made our way through Blow Deck, but that's nice too because you're kind of just it's a little mindless, right? You just need to uh -huh. go somewhere else. So, but yeah, Below so deck. it's 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 a you fine line of deck. like it's a fine line of um of really uh, scripted drama, and then of course complete uh, <laughs> non scripted anything. Right, um, but. Broadway has been such a, a, a an ongoing thing. Even when you were doing TV shows and off doing these fantastic television shows before Moulin Rouge, it yeah. was always sort of like, got to get back to Broadway. It's, it's yeah. sort, It feels like it's always been sort of like the engine in your career, right? It's yeah. always the thing that's sort of... Absolutely. Yeah, I've, you know, I'm, I'm so fortunate that I, I've gotten to kind of walk in all these different mediums, but um, I always felt that Broadway was home for me and... I've, I've never felt it more, I think, than this year. You know, I think that kind of, you know, I, I'd, like, I'd like to think I'm a person that enjoys every single job, every single moment, and, but, but kind of having it all taken away has just shown us how important it is and uh, yeah. how vital it is. But yeah, no, it's home. And it's, um, there's just something about this community and the way that we all rally around each other is, uh, is really special. So I've been, I've, I've been really, I've been waiting and just, you know, hoping for the right opportunity to come back timing wise. And this was it. And I'm, I'm so yeah. you know, lucky that Moulin Rouge came along when it did. It, it's warmer out now and the snow's yeah. starting, the snow's yes. melting finally around me, which is great. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, and I know you're going to um, hit the links. Is that what oh. you say? Is that, is, that the, <laughs> is that the golfing links? What is it? Uh, I'll def, I will definitely be starting to golf soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the one thing that's been really missing in the last, uh, four or five months. But uh, yeah, no, the, the warm weather feels, it really feels, um, it feels like a shift, right? It's all these things. Yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, the, the election worked and, uh, and now the vaccine's yeah. seemingly working and now the weather's getting warm. So I really hope that, uh, that this is all just um, the beginning of the tide turning. And of course I thought, I saw the, the announcement, it was last week or the week before about the 33% indoor audiences allowed in New York as of April 2nd. And, I hope and I, I, I think that's like step one of a many step process for us getting back. So I'm just trying to, you know, remain hopeful that all these things and all the work that everyone, the sacrifices that have been made this year are going to start kind of paying off and we're going to be able to get back, uh, get back in, in inside and in the theater together. Yeah. I, um, I asked people, we asked people on the Broadway.com Instagram to give you uh, any questions and there are a lot, there's way okay. too many, but most of them were about miles. How's miles? How's miles? <laughs> Is Miles there? You look down. Can we have a cameo? <gasps> Stop. Oh my God. Hi, Miles. What a he's, cutie. So yeah, he's good. Say hey, buddy. Say hi, bud. Oh, hi, cutie. Say hi, buddy. Oh, yeah. my so, so gosh, he's uh, very cuddle, cuddleable. He's, He's good, and he's very, he's very confused with the extra voice in here, but he's he's good. He's, he's, he's doing great, and he's loving he's loving the warm weather. He's been uh, he's not he's not as happy that the dog parks are more crowded now, but he's loving mm. the warm weather. Yeah, yeah. Right. How are you? Henry's good. He reacts to certain voices. It's like yeah. certain certain voices. Uh, it's funny. He'll be like, "You're talking to that person again on Facetime." Yeah. So you know, like he'll he'll react. Right now, he's actually sleeping. It's all good. 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 But um. I'm going to ask a couple other sort of quick questions people had. People had a lot of really sure. fun questions. So let's just yep. like sort of fly through them. 
Agatha wanted to know if you could add a song to the Moulin Rouge uh, score. Is there any like popular song you would want to throw in the mix? Mm. Um, you know the 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 one that um, we didn't. It was one of the one, It was one of the few that we didn't get the rights to. But they used to when we did the lab, and it's in the movie too. The the uh, the, the dancers in the opening number used to can can to smells like Teen Spirit. Oh yeah, yeah, totally song. right. Yeah, and yeah. And it was really, really amazing. Somebody just said Uptown Funk. Yeah, Uptown Funk was in there too. That was a really good one. <laughs> but yeah, those yeah. are those are great. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, besides that, I just think everything. I've kind of detached. Everything works so well. I think in the narrative I know. that. Um, yeah, but those those are the those are the two that I I do miss. I do miss those two very much from our lab. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tessa asks about who are the Broadway stars that inspired you. Oh, wow. Um, when you were young, coming up. You know, uh, Manny Patinkin did and still does. Uh, when, I got to, when I got to studying theater in college, I listened to, you know, I listened to Raul Esparza and Gavin Creel and, you know, Norbert. And I just, you know, I listened to these guys over and over again on cast albums and I tried to sing like them and I tried to, you know, I was like, how do they do that? How do they, how do they sing like that? And then, of course, you know, I've become friends with all of them, which still sometimes I... You know, I was actually speaking to Gavin the other day because we're um, uh, sneak peek. We have another uh, uh, something coming that we're doing together uh, soon. But uh, and again, I, I stopped after I talked to Gavin and I was just like, I, yeah, I used to just listen to Mill the Thoroughly Modern Millie soundtrack and try to sound like him. So, yeah. So those are definitely the people that I, I really looked up to. Yeah. Uh, you're inspired by Mandy Patinkin's current like quarantine fashion and all of his content. So good. Andy Patinkin and his wife and their son doing that and putting that out there has just been some of the, some of the biggest smiles of this whole quarantine. And I just, totally. I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of his to the point where I've actually seen, you know, I, I, I've been in the same room as him. And it's one of those things where like, I don't, you know, I'm such a fan that I actually didn't say anything because I'm worried that if, if we meet that way that, you know, it's just like, I'm always like, you know, so I'm, I'm just like, I'm, a, I'm such a huge fan of this. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I am too. And I actually interviewed him and just having him like across from me for a half hour, I was like, I can ask me to take anything I want. This is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Because it's like, because it's not, because it's awkward otherwise. Like, yeah, just, what am I supposed to say? What if I say something that's not that he thinks isn't cool? So no, I just think, I think he's the coolest. Um, Sienna wants to know, what was your most intimidating audition and how did you get through it? How did you like get yourself through it? Oh, uh, well, um, this is a little inside baseball, but uh, being, being as it's the 10th anniversary of our first preview today, I think Catch Me If You Can was probably the most intimidating. Um, yeah. I, I had, uh, you know, I'd done Hairspray, so I knew the creative team really well, which can work in your favor, but can also work against you a little bit because they know you a certain way and you kind of have to change their uh, impression of you a little bit. But, you know, that day I, they, were re -audition, they were auditioning for Frank and I actually didn't have an appointment for it. And so many people kept asking me if I was going in and I wasn't. And then kind of the last minute the night before, I heard that they wanted to see me again because they'd seen me a bunch for, at, at that point. They didn't think I was the guy. Mm -hmm. I'd done a reading in the ensemble where I wasn't, you know, they didn't think I was the guy. And then kind of the night before they said, come on in. And I had, you know, 25 pages of material. And wow. it was just one of those things that I, I just, and I got there and like the other people that were auditioning was just like every single person that I admired in this, this city and business. And I just, it was a real light bulb moment for me. I, I was in, I was in the bathroom and I kind of just looked in the mirror and I, I just had to laugh. I just had to laugh at the whole, the whole thing. And uh, it, it was a moment where I kind of finally just like released the, re the result of everything. And then of course, I think that's what allowed me to really go in the room and, Somebody said I was the guy. I was the guy. I was finally the guy, and I, they saw I was the guy. So that was definitely my most intimidating. And that is Miles, Miles making. That is Miles. Miles had a lot of reactions. Miles his, uh, had a lot of. It's, but it's Miles was like, he, I feel like he was feeling. He was feeling the pressure of that story for you. Well, I said connection. the. Uh, I said the fateful words of the DP, and so now he's. Uh, oh. He's, he, knows it, he knows it's almost. Time. Oh, okay. Now like the timer's on. We'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. let him go. We'll let him go soon, Miles. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a few more questions. Uh, Carrie wants to know, how do you keep your voice in shape? I mean, you've been singing. I'm assuming yeah. you're singing yeah. Schmigadoon. Yep, I sing in and, Schmigadoon and it's yeah. uh, hilarious and hopefully hilarious and great and fun. And uh, yeah, I still, you know, I just kind of sing. I kind of sing, sing the shower. I sing, 
on the you know walking down the street it's just you know but no i i still i've taken a few voice lessons over i took some voice lessons before schmigadoon just to get try to get back in shape um right i'm working on something else right now that that you'll you know see soon but yeah it's uh and then when i'm in a show it's it's very boring but it's uh sleep and water and don't drink too much alcohol and sleep 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 that's really that's the key Katie wants to know if you would ever consider playing Dan in Next to Normal. I like that question. Oh, Dan. Um, I, Dan. Dan the dad. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, we'll see. You know, maybe in the Next to Normal revival will be enough, uh, enough time away that I could, I could play Dan. But no, absolutely. That show still um, just has, a, has, the, has such a place in my heart. And, yeah. you know, Bobby Spencer just wrecks emotionally wrecks me like no other on stage <laughs> so I know. dan and dan and you know dan in my heart is is quite full um nancy wants to know which of your characters do you think would be the worst to deal with personality wise like as a person probably gabe you know what i mean he's just like he's a little <laughs> bit a uh, little bit of a terror uh, <laughs> uh realistically and symbolically yeah and, and maybe and maybe frank jr because you'd really never know what you're going to get or you never know yeah. if you're getting an angle plate or yeah, all of those things. Yeah, Frank would be a really difficult person, I think, to deal with. Yeah, although in real just... life, Frank Abagnale is the greatest person. And, you know, we were very lucky to have him very involved in our production. And, right. uh, you know, he's, he's, he's one of the most incredible people I've ever met, so. Well, we don't know what's going on with the Tony Awards yet, but do you have a tuxedo ready to throw on if you have to do something in some way or? I mean, I yeah, kind of, kind of like our show. If they say we're having the Tonys, I'll say, you know, when can I, when can I be there? I just hope, you know, I hope, I hope at this point that um, I, I hope we're going to get to do it for real, right? It's like, you know, yeah. I just again, I'm trying to be optimistic that I know people are working things out, but you know, two thousand people can watch the Knicks in Madison Square Garden, so why can't seven hundred of us be in Radio City and do the show? So those are the things that I'm really hoping are the next steps and. I hope that we can do them live for real. And I hope that it'll be uh, within the next few months. And I hope that tickets are back on sale for Broadway. So I just, you know, I hope it's a big love letter and celebration of theater and our industry. And hopefully that'll, yeah. that's, that's sooner than later. A lot of people are, at, a lot of people ask in the comments and I see them asking live too. They're asking if your hair is blonde or brunette. And, and before you, before you go into that, they're acting like this is a very important question. What? You and I have basically the same exact color hair. Very similar. Like, yeah. What do you I think? think it's, what do you I think mean, I, like? I used to always say like dirty blonde. That used to be like the term I would use. Yeah. Also a great, great play by the way too. But, yeah. um, I, I don't know what it is. So it's just, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I, it's, I've, all, I've thought like dirty blonde or like, like really dirty blonde or really light <laughs> brown, really but, but it's, yeah, I don't know. I, but it's funny. I've all, actually growing up, I always thought I had like light brown hair. And then kind of once I started working, people said uh, it was blonde, but I, 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 I've, I've been more in the light brown camp. I think it's life. light brown. I yeah, think it's light people, brown. The, for all the wagering that's going on that I see in the comments. I honeycomb, think, honeycomb. My, well, my hair's, honey... not, my hair's definitely not dark brown, so somebody said that. But no, no it's dishwater no. blonde. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, this, is... this was the most important question that had to be dealt with. So Light brown, but, but I'll throw a wrinkle in it. If I, if I golf too much or I spend too much time in the sun in the summer, then it really does get blonde. So, you know, take your pick. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mr. Tave, um, you are always a delight and i've um you've had such an incredible career it's always so great and you always have it you have a real um knack for picking things that i love so thank you for that thank you you're, for being in fantastic shows that i'm obsessed with you're very welcome and thank you for you know and broadway.com for always you know the amazing support and everyone tuning in right now thank you for uh always being just uh, vehement supporters of me and my career and the shows I'm in and, 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 and uh, somebody else wants to say goodbye. I'll just say, I know you're going to the dog park, honey. Yeah, we're, we're doing go it. You're doing, we're going to do the walk. We're going to go to the DP. Yeah. <laughs> the D, the D. yeah. Thank you so Thanks. much. It was so good to see you. Good I'm going to end the video now. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Have bye. a great day, everyone. Thank you for joining us.